uh, is here playing against CLG Nakat. That's right, Dakpo representing FX DFW. They're kind of the smash mecha of the DFW area. Big shout out to that whole team over there. Dakpo, he's playing ZSS, and this is a matchup that Nakat is certainly comfortable with. He has plenty of training practice with Nairo, who many of us regard as one of the best, if not the best ZSS in the world. Uh, Dakpo, what's going to make him come out on top is just how read-oriented of a player he is. And what that means is even if he doesn't get those really satisfying early kills with the up-air, up-air, up B, he's more than content to land the KOs when he needs to via a plethora of different options. Good survival DI bot from the cat. Uh, but uh, at this point, Dakpo is just trying to keep the stage control. Constantly try to look for some sort of disable and then follow up with F tilt, follow up with some sort of a smash attack because at this percentage, the cat really can't survive too terribly much. Um, ZSS, though, uh, the, uh, excuse me, Nick Ness, on the other hand, converts a ton off of grabs. We're used to seeing down throw fair, double jump fair. We're used to seeing a great uh, stage control off of back airs and whatnot and creating the knockback situations. But even then, keeping it simple, using things like quick with quick active frames like Nairs are the great tools that you're going to see that constantly reset the situation and frustrate opponents. And even when the cat has sh his shield up, it can be so scary because of how quick he can act out. He can do, just jump out to a quick Nair, and that's just such an excellent option to kind of interrupt your opponent as they're coming back onto the stage. Speaking of coming up onto the stage, Dakpo back on, 136 to 108%. Nakat looking for this grab. He wants that's to find it. the bear, and he ends up connecting with it perfectly. So keep an eye out for Dakpo to threaten people as they're off stage. Is that going to finish? No, he misses the timing on the fair. He's threat now. There's something to keep in mind here as a concept with CSS, which Ooh. is the ability to threaten off stage. You have command jumps. You have the ability to stay out here with these long legs. When you're coming back onto the stage, you have to be really cognitive of the threat ranges that come with CSS. You'll see Dakpo not afraid to go down there and hover right around the same height. What he's doing is challenging the cat. He's challenging the opponents to say, make a move, I'm going to react. This is my positioning, and I'm going to take as little risk as I can while constantly making you feel uncomfortable. I'm pleasantly surprised by how well Dakpo is doing overall. Like we touched on, the cat has plenty of ZSS experience, and whenever I think about DFW, we only have two main Aust main Nest players, one of them being Austin, who is so much fun to watch, and the other one is Jutsu, who is a, a relatively newer player. Dakpo being able to sling his way back onto the stage, but he's still losing quite a bit from a percent. The cat has done a great job of bringing this back despite Dakpo's early game presence. No, doesn't a actually get that much off the hits there, and even puts him in a compromising position. Look for Dakpo to try to nair zeer him out. He doesn't want to take any unnecessary risks at this point. Now, from those conversions off of grabs, you're going to look for the up airs or the up Bs. It's going to be the hard call of whether or not Nakat is going to be air dodging that Dakpo is looking for. Cat. Trying to maybe find one of these grabs. We saw him go for one near the end of that first stock. Let's see if he can maybe clutch it or if he's going to be going for a surprise aerial instead. There's the aerial. Nair coming out. Not enough to take out Dakpo. That's but the it. second one. Again, the positioning where he was at made it just so difficult for Dakpo to really recover. Nakat did a great job of covering that ledge with that quick Nair and ensuring that he could finish that stock. Dakpo is one of these players that we're used to seeing out in DFW. That's super cerebral. Someone who's extremely smart, constantly out... Uh, outsmarting his opponents. Uh, while some of the tech, uh, technicality is kind of, uh, there's a lot of, granted, there's a lot of technicality that's in Smash 4. And a lot of the tech that we see ha online and on YouTube hasn't been implemented quite just yet. We, we talk about the instant snaps to ledge. We talk about uh, a lot of cool things that you can do with uh, perfect pivoting. But not a lot of it is implemented just yet. So what the players that you see generally rise to the top are people that are really smart and do good things like option coverage. Dakpo, I find, is someone who does a great job of doing that and constantly putting enough fear into his opponents to force reactions that are more advantageous for him that he can simply react to. Well, the cat so far seems fearless. Quick 56%, barely over 15 seconds into this game. Starting off so strong. It took him a little bit. I felt like he was playing a bit sluggish at the beginning of game one, but he is more than made up for it going into game number two. Wow. So now with the addition of platforms, you're going to see Dakpo try to push Nakat up onto these platforms and use things like up air, use things like Zare. Try to find protects and force them off the stage into a jab block situation. There's, there's tech that you can do with, with these platforms that can follow up and make terrifying combo strings happen. Certainly a lot of really formidable, very intense technical stuff.
for Dakpo, keep in mind, if you want to keep it simple, these platforms allow him to reset his jumps, which means he can chain together more of those up airs before connecting with that up B. And he's going to need one of them. Already 117%, Whoa. and the cat drawing first blood with a well-placed up air. I, I can't help but feel that there is a possibility of that being a tactical flop, because we almost never see the dive kicks coming from CSS. So there could be a chance that that was a tech flop, and the cat doing a good job of taking advantage of the situation. And here's those platforms coming into play, but Dakpo... Not the best follow-up afterwards. He decided he didn't want to pull the trigger just yet. He didn't want to overextend. But Nakat able to still put on a lot of damage regardless. Dakpo putting the stilettos on, but a good tech from Nakat. Another nice grab here. Whoa! Scooping him up, hitting him down with those stilettos. Let's see if he can maybe close out the stock. Nakat has just been all over him, though. He's been forcing him into this corner. And this is where we've really seen Dakpo historically struggle, is anytime the opponent is able to take away all the stage control enforcement into the corner. Dakpo finally answering back, getting that up B. But is it too late? I, I don't know. And honestly, in this game, it's really hard to tell. I feel like if people can continue to keep their persistence up and just build up, even having a bit of rage will oftentimes put you in some situations where you can come out on top as long as the opponent is just classy enough. Classy, because of X Factor, because you have rage as such a bit of an X Factor, something that's really unique that adds that additional bit of knockback. You never know sometimes what combos can open up or what can go away. That that was an excellent job though, using the down smash. Because it's an active uh, hitbox, you'll drop that out there and as soon as invulnerability is gone, you can get taken out. Great DI though from the cat. He's able to survive there. He want, There's situations where depending on where you're getting hit, you're wanting to DI down and away versus up and, and uh, away from your opponents. And it's generally pretty risky considering that you could hit the top of the blast zone. So this is something we've seen a bunch. Even though Ness has such a fast mash, Dakpo's able to get out of it because... Well, let me just put it to you this way. You'd never want to play Mario Party against Dakpo. This man is a mash monster. And because of that, he's been able to get out of the grabs a lot sooner than Nakata's has predicted. Whoa. And that's not allowed him to get the, bear, the uh, back throws that he's looking for. Dakpo was going out there, going with the, with the uh, command jump, looking to see if he could get the dive kick. But lucky for, Na lucky for Nakat, he was close enough to the stage where it wasn't an issue. Dakpo is known for going off stage here in these situations and not having any fear. Threatening and knowing that he, he has confidence in himself to land that last blow. Great grab there. All the cat needed. You noticed not even a single mash. He knew the percent was more than enough. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to deal with Dakpo's formidable mashing skills. He gets the grab, he gets the back throw, and he takes the stock. 2-0 right now for Nakat. Dakpo, take a minute. Figuring out what he needs to do. We talked about how good platforms could be for a character like ZSS, but I think about that initial sequence and how on point the cat was. It was something like 0 to 58 in 7, 8 seconds, something like that. Mm -hmm. But they're busting out the big guns here. So, uh, we're seeing Luigi and Pikachu. Uh, with, with Pikachu, I talked to Isam a fair amount, so I, I'm not a stranger to this character. I see quite a bit of it, and I love watching his matches. Big shout out to E Sam, I love you, homie. But uh, Luigi is what I think we've seen from Dakpo for a long time. But once the nerfs kind of came in and changed on how his uh, the down throw works, it's at certain percentages. Then I, I think we saw a little bit more of his experimentation with other characters as well. And what makes Dakpo so scary, even with this character, despite the nerfs, despite that solid, consistent endgame that Luigi once had, is the fact that Dakpo is such a smart, read-oriented player that he doesn't need those standard setups. He can just get a good read on his opponent and consistently Whoa! crush them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The surprise misfire coming out of nowhere and bailing Dakpo out of a bad situation while simultaneously <laughs> taking the stun. RNGesus is watching over him. Oh, well, maybe the cat Whoa. wants to go and take the stock as well, going in with this that back air. We just really saw the up. spinning elevators going down and then rising back up to the top. The jab grab follows up and he was looking for that back air as you saw the cat land onto the platform. But in these situations, Nakat does such a great job of just looking for that strong punish game. He's fearless, man. Even down there at the bottom of the screen, raising the blast zones, he's not afraid to go for thunder. Jab's coming out there. Nakat spot dodging, maybe predicting a grab. And it said the jabs end up collecting. Speaking of what else ends up collecting, that F smash getting a nice amount of damage. But Dakpo coming back down with that tornado, throwing Nakat a bit off guard here. He has currently about a stock lead. Let's see if he can maybe take something away or if Nakat's gonna start having answers for this Luigi. With the shield, with the changes to shield stun in this game, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Let me let me just revisit that. That was a fantastic finish. As soon as he took him into Thunder, the DI went completely off and he just got taken for a ride. But it, I, as I re return that point, the, the ability to know how to use 
Quick Attack with Pikachu is so important. Because you see how Shield Stun is different, you now can use Quick Attack with the first bit, with the first uh, arc, and then the second one immediately after as ways to traverse the stage. Because generally, as you hit them with the first one, they're in Shield Stun long enough for you to move away safely. Because they're stuck in Shield for that long. Speaking of safety, McCann needs to desperately find a way to get back onto the stage. Able to get that Nair to alleviate a little bit of pressure, but Dakpo right back. He's got hands on him, waited for the air dodge, and the cat instead deciding to jump very wise. Otherwise, he would have gotten hit by the tornado, but the falling tornado catches the cat off guard again. Two times we saw Dakpo whipping up smash. He's, he's definitely feeling it. He wants to finish off this character. He needs to be cautious, though. The cat. Playing occasionally like excellent. Pikachu has plenty of excellent edge guarding tools. Two times that we saw Nakat do that. We saw him go down there deep. We saw him go out for the thunder. And you saw Dakpo notice that. The power shield was eminent. The finish was there. That finish was also pretty sick too. That was that was just absolutely disgusting. Let's be honest, Neptune. Let's be honest. I oh my gosh. <laughs> they see me he rolling. Be, you, know, you know, Dakpo may be one of those more cerebral players. But there is no way he had any idea that that was going to happen. <laughs> that was incredible. Oh. Did you wait? I just realized. Did you quote Chameleon Air in the middle of that? <laughs> Throwing this back to 2003. Yeah, man. Don't show my age that much. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Right? I'm an older guy. I, I too am an older gentleman. Uh. Now, now that makes you just seem very <laughs> creepy. Very, very creepy. Slightly. It, it doesn't help that we're both from the south as well. We like three. We like wearing suits to work. <laughs> <laughs> Game four is underway. I almost forgot to count. Oh. Dakota versus the cat. And the cat with the counter pick here of Battlefield. Sorry, not about Final Destination, right? It's all good. My brain is still scrambled from the fact that you quoted Chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> that was a decade ago, my friend. <laughs> uh, well, Dakpo starting his conversion rates, and this is exactly what you can expect from Luigi this time around. He, they do a, Luigi players generally do a good job of going immediately for the chop, but once the percentages get higher, they tend to wait a little bit longer, see if you're going to air dodge before following up. They have to make a little bit of a read there. Mm. Two big things I want to see from the cat. How he deals with the fireball and how he decides to get some of these grabs. Because so far, as you can see there, Dakpo throws out the initial fireball, puts the cat in the shield, and then gets a grab follow-up afterwards. The cat, especially at these higher percentages, is going to be looking for a lot of these grabs, looking for, back th looking for those back throws because they're so strong. But as we've seen empirically in some of these previous matches, he doesn't even need those. Ness packs plenty of strong aerials that can go and finish the stocks as well. I was a little bit nervous about that back air on shield, I, and that's why we saw the immediate retort out of, from the cat out of jump out of shield there. Oh, but Dakpo is going to do his best to hold and retain stage control. Drops down. He was going to go for the back air there. But now, what a strange turn of event. The cat takes the stock. And now he SDs in the process. Ends we got up, what a beast. Yeah, ends up using that PK Thunder. It clips the stage and prevents him from being able to recover. We're at dead even. And Dakpo opening up so strong as a good Luigi should. 42% off of a grab. Gets a second one. Doesn't find the follow-up up air. But that fair was enough to go and put this to 55. Good U-turn into the jab strings. And now, now we're looking for a neutral where both of these guys want grab. That's that's really all they care about. And at this point, Nakat's feeding for it a lot more. Whoa, the release, that mash out really quick. I, I, it shows that both of these guys know exactly what each other's intentions are, and they're already pre-planning ahead for what they want to do to counteract it. And what that what Nakat needs to realize from these mashes is that he can't go for too many pummels. It's other players, sure. But I'm not joking when I'm telling you that you really don't want to play against Dakpo and Mario Party. You will have a bad time. That shy guy will not stop flying. But so far, the only person that seems to be flying is actually Dakpo back to the center, but he uses that quick combo break Nair to get out and get back into the center stage rather than being forced into that corner. Ah, Dakpo comes... Uh, they both had that moment where they both extended. They are trying to cover their way up. Wow, what an edge guard situation. The cat looking fantastic, trying to threaten with back air. Oh, yet again, down smash, coming back into play. I touched on him earlier. The ability to have an active hitbox waiting at the ledge is super important, especially if Dakpo overshoots it. Linger can be so integral. This game is so close, and the cat knows that he's only one good grab away, really. Oh, that's oh, not what you want to do! You dash attack into him! You just <laughs> push yourself that much closer to him! The sure you can waiting for you, and takes you into the heavens! What a finish. The cat thought he could catch Dakpo off guard there because it was such a quick dash attack. You know, generally speaking, especially when you look at some newer players, they go into those long strides and then they pop the dash attack. But it was almost instantaneous. You didn't even see the initial dash. And Dakpo just had that shield up. He waited for the overextension and he punished it perfectly, thereby mitigating the nerf that Luigi got with those lack of reliable 
kill setups at higher percentages. <laughs> the handshake mix-up leads us into this next game. <laughs> Dakpo with a great up B finisher was able to bring this all the way to game number five. The cat, however, getting that final stage and we're going back to Battlefield and the cat started off so strong here in game number two. So we wouldn't ex to be surprised if we see an opening similar to that for this final game as well. So far, Dakpo, he, he did perfect shield and then did spot dodge immediately after, which I find kind of odd. I imagine that he could have just done perfect shield grab initially to, to help him out there. There's certain option selects that you can do in this game because of the 10 frame buffer that exists that for guys like Luigi, if you see someone over, commit, uh, over space or if you know that they're going to do something odd or they get too, a bit too close to you with uh, an aerial, for instance, jump in there, jump in fair, you can power shield at some point and then immediately go for grab. Uh, as a buffered option. So once people do, do something odd on your shield that doesn't seem to make sense or it's spaced incorrectly, you have the conversions that you need ready to go. Whoa! Down, that smash. down smash. Yet again. A lingering hitbox. But he's still going to be able to get close. No! He falls a bit short. Very close, but no cigar. Dakpo potentially on the last stock of this winner side. Let's see if he can maybe bring it back. Dakpo is going to try to drop down here, and that's exactly what the cat's looking for. He, the cat's been doing a good job of just using that forehead, keep trucking, the, keep throwing those around. The the thing that's so important is to keep in mind. Oh my goodness! Two times? He's not afraid to do it twice. The YOLO uh, sure you can. I'm I'm all right. I'll, I appreciate that. I, I do appreciate that. I, I don't know if that was a major key. It didn't get the stock, but <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll say it unlocked something. It, it unlocked the cat to be the person that he's at at the very least. It unlocked the cat's and the oh, interesting. He didn't buffer a, a, a roll option back on the stage. Usually, if you're both going out there at the same time, as long as you choose some sort of an option, as you see the opponent coming back up, you get the you don't get trumped and you don't lose positioning. This is so smart from Nakat. He's continuing to put on a lot of percentage very safely using the PK fires as well as those PK Thunders. He gets the back throw. He's Not still living. enough. Dakpo still holding on to this stock, but Nakat has such a high percent. The Whoa. rage is going to be a factor we have to consider as well. Nakat still holding on to this stock. Dakpo still Nearly living at the end of his limits, and the falling up air is going to be taking Dakpo right off the top. Such a well fought.